It's okay. over to Patrick Bannon oh. for all the day's sports board highlights, including all the tabletop action. Apparently, the there's a crew at Team HQ right now. Board. The just give me a speech or something tonight. I'll get on the nine, news. It's on oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Followed at by our unsettling Sometimes you sound just like him, you know. Which tells the cautionary tale How are of one you? brave young lady's battles to survive the cruel administrations of our neighbours. It is eleven twenty-five. It it's in sizes. It and tonight, Doctor Adrian Atkinson Blimey I'm will be getting his teeth now. into Fiona from Hamble Bamblebury, who is in ten seconds. A everybody, twist on the humble biscuit, Rumpled, and sorry. that takes us after the weather and public information. Going in five, to our close down. four, but first three. Tonight, it's time to join Megan and the team for the National Nightly News. Good evening. News. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Proud parents throughout the territory find themselves ever more impressed by the bravery and commitment of their incredible children and the job they're doing keeping supply lines open against all possible odds. Don't starve. Advance's food program moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. And judging by the looks on this happy family's faces, it can't come a moment too soon. They'll be getting a good meal tonight on the government, just like the rest of us. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centres has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organisations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. With dwindling medical supplies leaving many of our most vulnerable facing chronic pain, it can come as no surprise that the transition centres have found themselves stretched to capacity. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Start me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Mankipur. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Mankipur community cohesion team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally, absent friends. Sad news today as the grave of former Sad National news Nightly News host Jeremy Donaldson is vandalised by radical disrupt activists. The much-loved broadcaster suffered a very tragic public breakdown ten weeks ago in an incident which ultimately cost him his life. A passionate and rebellious man, always willing to question authority, Jeremy was posthumously celebrated with a team service award by Advance for his outstanding dedication to journalistic truth. But first tonight, with the war about to enter its 21st week, I'll be chatting with Peter Clement live in an exclusive team talk from his home in Lanfordshire. Don't go away. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National Nightly News. Program. I'm thrilled to say I'll be chatting with mega pop star Lil C, who's going to be treating us to a world premiere of her new single. And then after that, in part three, we've got something new I promise you won't want to miss. But first tonight, let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's coming to us through the magic of television all the way from his home in Lanfordshire. Are you receiving me, Prime Minister? Loud and clear, Miss Wolf. Loud and clear. Let's start with the obvious. What's that in your hand, Prime Minister? Cheeky cow. 
But yeah, it's true. Some 75 days I spoke today to the people of Manchester. And I've got to say, I'm beginning to feel the benefits. It certainly looks that way. Well, I made a promise to Mrs. C, and as my old man used to say... Uh, a promise is worth keeping? Uh, a promise is worth like that, only with assholes. <laughs> So, I've heard from my sources that you and the illustrious Mrs. C plan to take your winter break somewhere a little different this year. That's right. We're planning a walking holiday right here in the territory, which is different for us because, like you, Megan, I've always been a big fan of those warm foreign beaches. Did you make this decision because of the blockade, Prime Minister? Well, no, that's a good question. Well, as you know, while the blockade has effectively restricted the flow of goods into the country, we and our neighbours continue to allow unimpeded travel, business leaders, ministers and such. So, although me and the missus could theoretically go to that gorgeous beach I just mentioned, it just doesn't smell much like team spirit to me. After all, as the old man used to say, when life gives you shite, make shite pie. <laughs> It works just as well with lemons and lemonade. <laughs> just as well with lemons and lemonade. 20 weeks ago, on the day international sanctions were imposed on the people of this country for the outrageous actions of their leaders, we are told a war began. But 10 weeks ago, on the night the blockade came into effect, another war began. When Jeremy Donaldson lost his life trying to get our message out to you, a war on truth was declared by advance. And Jeremy Donaldson was the first victim of that war. And so, by marking his grave, we claim Jeremy Donaldson as Disrupt's first martyr. And I fear, very sadly, that he may not be the last. But do not let one war distract you from another. Jeremy wouldn't know. We all did. And let's face it, there are still plenty of people in this country who could afford to lose a little bit of weight. What are you implying? No, but seriously, Prime Minister, we know you're very busy, but one final question, if I may. Oh, go on then. When you get home from a long day, your head full of the territory's hopes and fears, what music do you listen to when you work out to take your mind off things? Well, I know I've got a bit of a reputation for being an old fuddy-duddy, but I'd be lying if I didn't say there's something about little C that just demands one's attention. Well, let's hope you stay watching, Prime Minister, because she is going to be talking and performing live after the break. Oh, I'll be watching. After all, as my old man used to say, everything's a treat on a boring Friday with nothing but the wind up, you shun. It's, it's Wednesday, Prime Minister. I think the expression still stands. Peter Clement, thank you for joining me. Peter Clement, thank I don't know about you at home, but I think I there's something like kind home, of inspirational I there. I know I feel safer. When we come back, Lil C is going to be giving us the debut back, performance of her new single, and I'll be getting to meet her. As her biggest fan, I don't mind telling you, I'm pretty excited. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. <sighs> Ripping stuff. Was that even news? <laughs> I forgot to ask him what his favourite number is. Oh, I must have forgotten that in all the excitement. <laughs> so assuming it's not vodka, what do you think is actually in that milk? I reckon it's the tears of his enemies. You are one disturbed individual. That's how I cope. Low at these sanctions, Jane. I can't remember the last time we boiled a duck or orange. I concur absolutely, Brian. There's barely enough milk to undermine the tea. 
You'll no doubt have spotted the updated mixing desk. You'll need the new buttons during the next sections. First, we'll need applause when the guest enters and before her song. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it when we get there. One is certain a preferable way exists. And you'd be right. We've had our biggest and best brains working on this for months. And we've got you covered with the Remington Spiss Siege Survival Box. Inside every blockade-busting box, you'll find the things you've really missed. A red wine, where you can hardly taste the chemicals. Some rare meat we brew in our production laboratory. Chocolate so salty, you'd believe it came from Svenland. The list of luxuries is endless. At least seven. I've never heard of her before. Oh, she's big, really big. Is it? Is she any good? Nah, of course not. She dog shit. My kids go mad for her, absolutely mad. Live in ten seconds. Hang on, Colin, you've got kids. Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. What? Five, four, three. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's Mom before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album Smashing the Chart Records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. just say you look incredible oh thanks babe i'm doing this new regime and it really does work Ooh, what's the regime and my manager suggested it to me it basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep wow is, is that healthy oh, well look at me meg the leaves are my only nourishment <laughs> yep they certainly are now you'll have to forgive me but i'm somewhat of a super fan so i'm sorry if i get a bit starstruck oh bless you i've never actually heard of you before so if you do get a little tongue tied i can always carry the interview oh that's good to know so your first album f my face together it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded i mean what was that like for you bonkers just yeah. so weird i was in all the papers and the magazines overnight i went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show wow that must have been bizarre not really it was just like any other morning you know get up at five go on a four mile run have three meetings on my cabbage bath but then only then was my dad actually talking to me oh of course i mean the famed country singer billy bob jean short i didn't know you'd been estranged there's nothing that strange about it megan Okay, yes, yeah, so he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. But there really isn't anything uh -huh. to prove that he's wrong. So, uh, this newfound explosion to your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nicer underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as my manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? So, what, what's the album about? So I thought it was about like how pretty and great I am, yeah. but actually it's about monetizing youth, I think, or about like promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah, he says insecurity is an opportunity. Oh, <laughs> do you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? <laughs> telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dance soon and then this part will all be forgotten about. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yeah, it's from my album Put It In My A Together and it's out tomorrow. So soon, after the last one. Oh yeah, I've actually released the last one. He's occupied now, busy even. His room's never been tidier. But he keeps notebooks he won't let her read. And sometimes she catches him staring at her. And last week, she found him searching through her papers. When confronted, he always had a plausible answer, a good answer. But somehow it's too good. Like it's been prepared in advance. Or possibly by them. We want to know what the news will no longer tell us. And when we find out, we will tell you. We will hack into your news broadcasts we will defend your right to information, we will resist, and we will disrupt. Around the arse. I think things could have been different, you know, like better, but I don't know. I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. 
Did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come on, I'd press record on my cassette, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. Oh, you're, so, sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? Yeah, which can be tough. And sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Cragler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, you know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. <laughs> and on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So, it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. But you know what, it's actually all right. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. All right then, well, you can go and get ready for that. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> It was a very specific type of pleasure to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so here it is. You'll see with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. It's the Force's favorite, the Queen of Team, here to break in your blockades. We'll see. Uh -huh. you see I'm hungry there's a place in me that's empty I want that meat you're packing only you can feel that crack in me I'm under sea so come and free me ain't no disruption here boy I got no agenda just want the team in me doesn't distract you from the world well, outside I don't know what will <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for <laughs> like well for doing that Cifo. don't go anywhere after, after the break we'll finally be revealing the new we'll segment, segment of our show that we just know you're gonna love we'll be back we right after this and we're out can I just say 
Thank you so much for letting me do this. It really means a lot to me, you know. Yeah. To be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. Watch out for that father of yours. Won't you? Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain perspective. You know what it's like. Oh. Oh, right. Um, and Michael? What was Michael? What about Billy Bob Jean Shorts? Oh, my dad. He's such a sweetheart. We both have the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our image together. Wow. And Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a GT before my meeting with the Lube guys. <laughs> if they say for your pleasure, I'm going to start needing it. I hate to tell you this, but you're going to need all four sound effects buttons for this next section. Try and pick the most appropriate sound effect for the actor's lines. They can't hear your choices, so they'll be assuming you're helping things along and not making them look ridiculous. Mind you, after the last section, you can't help us all. Try and do better. Not anymore. I'm better than that now. I'll tell you what. Just keep adding flowers until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely. Right away. Ten seconds. And the cruise now mainly takes place around Zimbabwe. Five, four, three. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night, and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent, and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director, and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've dropped the algebra. I go by Jeff Plume now. <laughs> How do you like that? Oh, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. Oh. <laughs> it's shit. <laughs> and how does Angela feel about all this? And how does Angela Who? feel about all this? Your, uh, your wife. Your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> God, no. <laughs> no. No, no. she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with no, Norm now. We were married I'm last with month. Norm now. <laughs> Norm de, <laughs> yeah. Norm de Plume. Yeah. Norm de Plume. Yeah. And um, why did you write and, um, this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a protein sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. And I heard my father's voice. It said, father's voice. Jeff. It said, you listen here, yeah. boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You make hay You ring every penny you can get out of this. Every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, so got out my typewriter and started centre, clacking. Got out my typewriter <laughs> and started clacking. Utter shite. And without further ado, without let's give it up ado, for the notice board. You have to play a sound effect, Alex. Yes, yes, now you're getting it to keep going. Miss Craven. Good morning. Oh, Miss Craven. Morning, Ray. Oh. Everything morning, all right, Mrs. Ray. Craven? Everything you right, look as worried Craven. as the vicar in closing time. The... <laughs> oh, Ray, it's those oh, young louts. They vandalised my shop it's again. No! Yes! No! They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, language. and I know it's those damn and you. I, know it's <laughs> I don't know. It could be the vicar I don't know. at it closing could be the time. Vicar. <laughs> I'm just worried they won't ever I'm become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up a social outcast, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, Mrs Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. <laughs> See? <laughs> Works See? like a charm. 
What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow. Look wow. at all the letters in my Look collection today. Letters. Oh! I think that one's addressed to I me. That one's addressed to me. What? This, this one? What? This, oh, this one? so you're right. Oh, so you're right. <laughs> Brenda, she says she got an A on her maths she exam because one of her, her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player, she was our Brenda. What's up, losers? Oh, no! It's Brad! He's the coolest guy. In the village. That's right. In I just village. got here right. on my motorbike. <laughs> oh, clear off, Brad. We don't clear want off, any of Brad. your ilk uh, around your here. Ilk. What? Uh, Brad dudes. No. Brad ruffians. Dudes. No. Have you come Ruffian. to tag Have the notice board with your gang signs? Your... No way. I've actually come to pin no my resume on that notice board. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say? To tutoring? That's right. To tutoring? That is very That's right. important. Would you mind, Ray? Would you mind, Ray? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> 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 Spending your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or huffing glue? Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, blow me down! You, you know what? We misjudged you based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. No joy! So it wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful surprise. I now respect you as a man. Put her there, Ray. Oh, what the heck. Give us a hug. Sorry to interrupt the first groundbreaking Sorry episode of the notice board, the but we are receiving episode. some breaking news. Receiving I'm being told news. we're picking I'm up reports from across the continent of what appear to be. Across the continent of what appear to be. Oh God. Um, oh God. Um, what appear to be nuclear explosions in four explosions major cities. In four Major cities. Initial estimates put the death toll into. Initial estimates put the death toll into. And to the millions. And to the millions. I'm being told we're experiencing power fluctuations as a result, so um, apologies for any interruption result, to this so broadcast um, for you at home. For um, and apparently we can um, head over to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister <laughs> Julia Salisbury any moment now. Yep, any yes, moment let's now. go to that now. Yep, yes, let's go to that now. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for advance ago, detonated nuclear explosives advanced, simultaneously nuclear explosives in four simultaneously major cities across the continent. In four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 devices other urban centres and will not hesitate to detonate them. 
If our conditions We are hearing are stories right. of power fluctuations and what could be minor earthquakes uh, throughout the continent. Stand by. We've lost contact with our benefactors in Urkistan and Konislava. While our equipment seems to be resetting... Um, Can we get this confirmed? Can we get this verified? I need this verified. Our our people, they will finally be fed and clothed and educated and healed. But for your privileged few, the moment that they feared is now upon them. Our government has committed an Allow act, me to multiple be crystal acts clear. of mass destruction in if our name. If you fire a single shot at our territory or harm a single one of our citizens, we How will not to hesitate to detonate this. further devices. They you will not find them, though no doubt you are already searching are, for them. Uh, for the our technology and, is oh. decades ahead of yours. We will expect your complete acceptance of we our terms by midnight tonight. Acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to think of what I'm Jeremy would say if he were here now. What Jeremy would say if he were here now. He was always sceptical of advance. He was always sceptical of advance. Then I suppose he was always sceptical about everything. Then I suppose he was always sceptical about everything. That's part of what made him so That's part of frustrating him to so work with. Frustrating to work and with. And so brilliant. And so brilliant. And I'm not going to lie, Jeremy. I really I'm wish you were lie, here Jeremy. now. I really wish you were here now. You'd know what to say. You'd, you'd know what to you'd say. You'd know how to bring everyone together. You'd know how to bring everyone together. And I don't think you'd be angry and I don't think you'd be angry. I think you'd see that anger was the engine that, that brought us here. Anger was the engine that brought us here. I think you'd want us to stop. I think you'd to look around stop. us at the people and to things we're so very lucky to have. And to realise what a privilege it is just to be alive. What a privilege it is just to be alive. I think you'd want us to spare a thought for those with loved ones who are abroad tonight. And I think you'd be worried about retaliation. You'd be worried you wouldn't about show retaliation. It. You wouldn't show it. You'd remind us that this country and its people this country and its endure. People You'd remind us that despite the way you hated us, how it sounds, the way you hated we are a team. We are and I think team. you'd ask us to go to our loved ones and be and with I them think tonight. You'd ask us to go to our loved ones and be with them tonight. But I don't have the words that you had, Jeremy. But I don't have the words that you had, Jeremy. None of us do. None of us do. My name's Megan Wolf. My name's Megan. Let's Wolf. make tomorrow better. And we're out. So here at Advance, we know that for many of you these are frightening times. But you <laughs> should not it. be afraid. Because the team is here to defend you. To protect you. Yeah, you would have done your sure old bastard. You stay free to enjoy all of the benefits of our new society. We are not a terror.
receiving. Calling. Come in, Alex. Can you hear the signal? Pick up. Alex, are you receiving? Pick up. This is Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and to be frank, we need your help. I know you've never been that sympathetic to our cause, but since the bombs... Well, you've seen what happened. They have to be stopped, Alex. You know it in your heart, and tonight... Well, it might be our very last chance. Play our tape at the second break. It's on your right, and... Please... When I hack in, let my message reach the people just once, just tonight, before advance can't be stopped. Because I don't want to go on a date with your cousin, Colin. What have you got to lose? My dignity, my reputation. It's all right once you get past the teeth and the problematic tattoo. I am perfectly capable of messing up my own love life. Sorry about that. David wouldn't get off the phone. Oh, is David single? For Christ's sake, Colin, stay out of it. I can help you. I'm an expert at romance. Ask my ex-wives. Please don't set me up with your brother. That's ten seconds, everybody. You're not as tight, babe. Too short. Too smart. Going in five, four, three. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News, broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wolf. Our top stories tonight, ashes to ashes. It's been 40 days since Disrupt conducted attacks across the territories. The coordinated action, dubbed the Night of Fire by commentators, was seen as an attempt to subvert the supply chain, but there may have been more to it. After a roadside IED toppled the convoy, prisoners, including Portia Hamilton Mann, the daughter of the former Prime Minister, were freed and have subsequently vanished. The escapees are presumed to have fled the territories. Here at Channel One, we say good riddance to bad rubbish. Food, glorious food. With the last of the menu centres opening in territories 5, 8 and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the programme is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractor Pants, spokesman for the menu centres, said today that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankley or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. Happy talk. Record happiness levels have been reported today across the territories. As more and more former countries join the new future, a survey carried out by scientists at Queensview University reveals a stunning fall in depression, self-harm and suicides, especially in those territories which have historically faced the most unjust of individuals. According to the professors, the binomial trajectories of the Bezier distribution show signs of becoming both inverted and protracted when dispersed over the square root of time. By applying Harrington's third law in conjunction with the Val's variation, we can clearly see that things are looking mathematically good for Julia Salisbury and Advance. Any dream will do. Oddball Disrupt spokesman Alan James today set out Disrupt's vision for what he calls a return to free society. However, the problematic provocateur avoided answering any questions on the movement's increasingly sinister tactics. Leading commentator and regular guest on the National Nightly News, Katie Brightman, has been notably outspoken against both Disrupt and Mr. James himself. Her family reported today that she's not been seen since last Tuesday. Meanwhile, three stories we've been following reach interesting endings this evening. Weeping spores. Responsibilities overwhelming success in controlling pregnancy seems to have come with unforeseen consequences as sexually transmitted infections soar across the territories. A particular concern is a new super herpes mutation, which one sufferer described as like being fisted up my inflamed Remington. Not the legacy the CEO would want after a tempestuous two years at the top. She resigned this morning. Fun guy. Unexpected news today as two familiar scientists announced the birth of an extraordinary child. The underground struggle of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sporsborg and Horgensward captured the hearts of people around the world. And after an arduous return voyage, which took over a year, the couple say they've never been happier. Baby Dante is said to be healthy, if a bit partial to the air in cupboard. Man United. 
a happily ever after for Johnny Hamsleeves and partner and former teammate Eric Justin, who finally tied the knot this week. Speaking as the pair headed off for their honeymoon in Territory 15, Johnny acknowledged that there would be many in the football world who wouldn't accept his choice of partner. I think it's time people grew up, he said. Some people are ginger. Get over it. All that, plus we'll be taking a trip to Dangley Parts for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. People of the territories, today is the day we take back control. Soon it will be time for you to help us again. Come out of your houses, block the traffic, bring the capital to a standstill. I've met so many of you in my travels up and down Territory 1. You always ask the same question. How can I help? Well, this is how. And as for when, you'll know. Keep watching. But first, 500 days after the loss of a fine leader and a great man, the start of tonight's programme is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Patrick. Longer listening to that old bitch lying through her teeth about missing that poor bastard. Uh, Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny. Things were better with Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were. Because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Hello, Patrick. We're well, live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? No, no, no. Not with public ownership. No, with public I'm ownership, you can't say anything Patrick. these days. Yeah, she's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. I heard from an aide. That... Hello, Megan. You join me here live from the what? Hello, Megan. You join me here live from the what? Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Uh, Seems like we've lost some signal there for a moment. Well, we will be going live to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek at the designs and Alana Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, OK. All right. It seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. I'm Patrick Bannon. And we are indeed live here. Apologies for the technical difficulties there, but any moment now, Julia Salisbury will step out on stage behind me. Alex, Bozeman here. The boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. You're going to have to do it on the fly. For goodness sake, make sure you make it look good. Slowly gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. You can undermine them here and help us win hearts and minds. Make him look bad, Alex. Really bad. And it seems like the ceremony is getting underway. Here is Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her address. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader, a statesman, a dear friend and a hero, Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. Born to a working class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television. First moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught us all of us, not to be content with the way things are, not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them. Courage, integrity, empathy and hard bloody graft. <laughs> Across a career spanning three decades, Peter Clement was known for shows including Wake Up, It's Saturday, and much later, late night chat show PT, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. 
Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. <laughs> he always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character that he chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements, his faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these United Territories. Famous for his potty mouth, it's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over 1.5 million swear words during his career, though some sources put this figure well in excess of 2 million F-bombs alone. Gripped by illness as he was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night, he wasn't the man we loved. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly met Peter 20 years ago. Really Moments before I was supposed to give a speech. Not unlike this one, actually. Like Only I'd, um, actually. I'd spilt coffee I'd all down myself. And I was young, nervous, desperate to be nervous, liked. And, nervous, and from behind me, I heard, Christ, Pet, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> Before I could even say a word, he'd stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. Kind, compassionate, sensitive, a brilliant thinker, a natural leader, but mostly, but mostly a good man. A good man. Mm. This glorious nation of ours, so beautiful and new, this shining beacon of... Thank you, Alex. There'll be another opportunity to steer public perception soon. It's really starting. You'll know when. His accomplishments, the future he forged, the boundaries he pushed, to me... To me, he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the Peter Clement Memorial Garden. Oh, should we see if we can get a countdown going? Everyone with me. 10, 9, 8, 7. Now, Alex, control the message. Mom, we have to get into safety. Come with us. I'm not leaving. I can't. <laughs> you two, come with me. <laughs> Don't panic. No, help us here. We're going to help you. We need a medic here. <laughs> You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I'm resisting. We'll let you up. No resisting. Ah! Stop what you. What are you doing? No resisting. You're so. Huh? No resisting. I'm I'm you. Resist. Turn the camera off. I National Night News. We have the right to be here. I said turn the fucking camera off! I said turn the fucking camera off! Who the fuck are you? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. Yes, you can. Medics are coming, you sit down. I can't hear you. I'm from the National Nightly News. Well, then you can consider this payback. Salisbury's still here. Salisbury's still here. Junior Salisbury! You were guilty of the murder of more than 10 million people! Justice demands a response! Haven't you done enough? Look around you! Fucking this is time. what your precious freedom looks like, is it? Oh, no, no, no. Wake up! Take to the streets! The time has come! Stop fires! Break windows! Draw them out! They can't stop us all! Resist! Distract me! Lower your weapons! Yeah. Location secure. No, 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 no,
Shocking scenes from the capital. Exclusive. Shocking scenes from the capital. You've just seen them execute unarmed civilians. People like you and me. So why are you watching this? Why are you not in the streets with us tonight? What will it take for you to get up and be a part of this? March on team headquarters. Storm the building. Demand elections. Demand answers. Be what you were born to be. The once and future free. That means by now. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. That didn't go so well, Alex. But we can turn it around in the next segment. One was a good distance from the unit base. This is becoming a weekly event. No. It's different tonight. This is the big one. Great. So there's a revolution happening outside and we're off to dangly fucking parts. That's journalism, apparently. We get set for the next sequence. We don't have spoons. It's crazy Neil with another steal of a deal. We got sticks. We got sticks that do tricks. We got an evil child. This is my young niece, Felicia. Small, nimble, agile. She can get through a dog flap, cat flap, rabbit flap, rat trap, mouse trap. All you gotta do is feed her once a day. She'll eat anything. Scrap, food off your plate, food out the bin, dog food. This is a steal of a deal to have a family member stealing for you by crazy Neil. We got sticks. Buy our sticks. Buy our motherfucking sticks. We've got empty toilet rolls. Some are crushed, some are squashed, some are ripped up, some aren't even cardboard. Some of them are just grit in a bag. Alex, during this next section, a cameraman working in the newsroom, who's one of us, is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on, but if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. Our operatives will do the rest. Again, this is your new makeup artist, Craig. No. What? No. Ten seconds, everybody. I'm sorry, Craig. It's a no. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Welcome Megan Wolfe. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final Very episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? Oh, it's real. <laughs> there, I said it. it. It connects with people. You know, people look at us and they say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out of the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Right. Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. So, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, um, my talent, my look. Wow, you really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. Mm. We've just heard so well. our man's on camera four. I have a real sense of responsibility now. Get back to the interview, Alex. Something precious, and that I should use that platform for good. Yeah, that's really important. We should use this platform to, to do good in the world. I agree. That's exactly it. So I've decided to help as many. Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next, you'll need to give them a go. Is that um, better access to education or you know, reducing child poverty? Uh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, how, many, how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late 30s. <laughs> Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a futon in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey. I live a privileged life, what can I say? I mean, any child I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children, were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're Northerns, I presume so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking to think actually that only one in 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Hmm, I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable then? Well, 
it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water. So, uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. <laughs> now that I can relate to. Right, you better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Raiden sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded and keep everything in perspective. Clearly, not everyone else agrees. But that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. <laughs> What a day! First the tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait, perhaps I do. Oh! By St Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirt bag! Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. It's just me, a community cohesion officer, responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course. Keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? I know! It's a disgrace. Somebody it's time for the blow code. Give us three booze in a row, Alex. That will start the pencil movement. We might just pull this off. Push forward! Three booze, Alex. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! It looks heavy. They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. Yes! It's no good. It looks it's like all those crucifix like classes were a waste of time. Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to move it. Two for two. Fantastic. It looks like all those lifting classes were a waste of time. It's too heavy. Even for me, a strong, capable. I did it, Alex. We're good to go. To lift this. Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? Hi! Well done, Captain Evans. You're so much stronger than us. Especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. No luck catching the little devil then? Unfortunately not. The ferret struck again last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate. Don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. No, Laura, no. tell me, why do they call him the ferret? Some him? say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really, it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. The community cohesion team are doing their best, but they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open! <laughs> Me! Blackout! It's the morning of the village fate, it's thanks the to the theatrical the convention. convention. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's Mrs. Craven setting up her cake stall. And look, 
Here's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that will be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you judging the jams? I couldn't possibly. Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <gasps> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. That damn ferret to struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, ferret. <gasps> Me? Been drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you! The vicar! I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it! You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays! I shouldn't have to work two days a week! But how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next, I noticed that the vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room or jam. Almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! You did it, Captain. You could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. Well, that was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. And what a way to end it. Thank you, as always, to Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ad. Well done, everybody. Wow! Ha! What a brilliant run, eh? After party at my place. What advert is this, Alex? I don't remember passing it for broadcast. I think you made a mistake there. Uh, I've got four kinds of sausage. You've probably seen me on the news. Hey, you, you. You coming to the after party? And how progressive their policies are. Well, I was wrong. Oh, for... And I'm here tonight to say I'm sorry. One last push, Alex. We're closing in. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. We'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. It's happening, Alex. Tonight we take it back! I always envied my friends who had so much more. Over the years, my jealousy grew. So when Advance came to power, I didn't think about the damage they would do. I... I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards Advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. 
We are infantilized by Advance's naive policies. Please, Sarah, anything. I'm sorry, Mum, I'm really not supposed to say. Are we safe? Hi, I'm Maddie. Uh, Jenny just said to ask if you need a touch-up. I have brought myself out to the media to defend... That's my shade, is it? Uh, yeah. This is I my shade? My parents. Mm. I see that now. Mum. Dad. You can run back to Jenny now. Our only hope. Sorry about that, Sarah. Nothing you can tell me. Look, at all, like, at all. They've said no one's died, no, that's no. all I can say. Oh, Ten goodness. seconds! What's wrong with you? She is in tears. Ugh. Going in five, four, three... Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking disrupt attack. But first, I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical Everyone is Talking About. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm National Nightly welcome to the Novaries. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. And my job is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, John. He's due home soon, won't be long. And I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling. We share coffee. Is it cancer? Worse of John, we're having a baby. How can this be? Oh, woe is me. Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. safety. In our tiny flat, we built a peaceful habitat. Now our lives are fucked, we're, we're having, having a baby. baby. Now you can't have any wine at the club. And there won't be any time. For foot rubs. Now your hair will stink of weed And you'll start to disagree And forget about that holiday in Territory 3 No more waking up at half past ten In fact, you're never going to get a good night's sleep again No more snap decisions to the one to a club You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub Why can't we be more like our gay and lesbian jobs? The only clue they have to deal with comes from personal bums. Now when I take a sick day at home, the parasite won't leave you alone. How he's grown! We're our top priority. I look after you. Life. We're having a baby. We're having a baby. Changing nappies daily. We're having a baby. No more weekends by the coast. Now your kid is up the most. It's more than. Sing crazy to have childless days. 
Amazing. The Novaries there, treating us to their opening number from Energy for a Childless Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the Capital Theatre District. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. Right then, come on, you got. Come on down. Let's go. Don't be shy. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the show? Yes. yes. to be. <laughs> well, listen, let's get stuck in. You're an amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night. With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. How rude of me. I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack. Hi. Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sattley. Used to be in the business professionally. My name's Jill, with a J. And I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. Oh my goodness, guys! Our names all begin with J! How have we never noticed that? <laughs> because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing, but we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe, as well as being friends, you're also couples. You know, in real life, as well as in the show. Well, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for... some confusion in the rehearsal room. Well, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. What about John? Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was very confusing. Not for a professional. After <laughs> much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> And gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, God, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Mimbley Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital! <laughs> it's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the Cavadal. <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. This piece isn't peaceful. Stand by, Alex. Send for the orange. It's about children and why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem.
Terrible problem. Having children. Terrible. You understand, Megan. You clearly agree. Well, this isn't about me. Of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives. And there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. You're very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one. Because You're the youngest, we know! It's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Janet. Got you back. So, could John um, just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. And there's lots of singing. And dancing. A lot. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle-eyed, she sees her friend's rapid advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. I probably said too much already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not spoil the second act for anyone who might come to see it. <laughs> Which should be all of you. <laughs> for too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete, that, that children are a, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. We just want people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without stigma. <laughs> you know, when I was 14, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to dip my toes into the eating. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. The No Girl Fair. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Megan. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of tonight's devastating and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. Uh, I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. I couldn't leave them. No, there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. Or Palisades. Or lemonade. Right. So, is the situation now? Are we safe? Uh, yes. Uh, the security services perform their duties without hesitation. And I would like to assure the public that although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Oh, that's good news about the civilian. Sorry, did you, did you say no deaths? That's right. No civilian deaths. Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were, as always, so cohesive. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Of course, the camera, there's the ca speak there, on, on the camera there. Speak there on, on the camera. Stay at home tonight. Stay at home. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment, but as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. <laughs> Thank you, Prime Minister, Thank for those you. strong words of strength. Back to the studio, Megan now, in the studio with Megan Wolfe now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. You need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Night News. But before we go, tonight's National Night News. Victory is in sight, my friends. You have mobilised. You have come together from our agents at the television networks risking arrest and getting those words to you, to the many hundreds and thousands gathering to invade team headquarters. As I speak, we are turning the tide and it is time for change. Tonight we topple their regime and we also silence their mouthpiece. Channel One, time to wake up. Out from the shadows and they are not the overwhelming force they would have you believe. The military have been actioned and well, it's pretty scary out there tonight. So stay at home and stay with Channel One because the team has assured this programme that the turbulence will soon be over.
once again focus our minds on building the new future with equality, fairness, and resources for all. My name is Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. Damn it, Alex. Tonight is the beginning of the fall of advance. Fight to jet at 11 o'clock.
Alex, here we are again. I know things aren't as exciting as they used to be, but advances bring your daughter to work day initiative should add a bit of spice to the mix. We make do, eh? It's What Music is Best, a rundown of the top selling songs across the territories. Expect catchy tunes and scenes of an inappropriately sexual nature, not one to miss. At 10pm, it's time for Julia's Diary. <laughs> 